Today, we are doing bold face critical reasoning questions, and I know everybody hates these questions, but here's the thing. Because of the way they have to set up the question, there's one strategy that is incredibly effective. It works every time, and it works really fast. I'm gonna show you what that is, and then we're gonna go through a couple really hard examples that you're gonna absolutely fly through. And just for being here today, I have a free bonus for you. For now, I am offering my GRE Bootcamp for free. It's an intensive course designed to raise your GRE score 10 points in two weeks. It covers critical areas of the test along with hundreds of practice problems and quizzes and is completely free. The link is right down there in the description. Okay, let's tackle those critical reasoning problems. So the strategy is very simple and very effective. First, pick out the conclusion because we always pick out the conclusion. Next, the correct answer choice must get these three things right, so we check off each of these three things in order. First, the boldface sentence must either be a conclusion-y type statement or an evidence-y type statement. Those are your only two choices, so the test has to label each statement correctly. So go through all the answer choices and eliminate any that say an evidence-y type statement is a conclusion or a conclusion-y type statement is evidence. Usually, this knocks out two to three answer choices. Next, see if the boldface sentences go in the same logical direction, like the first is evidence that supports the second sentence, or if the boldface sentences go in the opposite logical directions, like the first sentence is evidence that contradicts the second sentence. Also, check to see if the sentences support or contradict the conclusion, eliminate any answer choices get, that gets the logical direction wrong, and at this point, you're usually left with just one answer standing and you're done. If they want to be really mean, then you have to go to a third level and split hairs in the description word. Is it more of a conclusion or more of a prediction? Is it evidence or really an assumption? Usually they don't make you go to that level. Let's try a hard example, and using this method, you're going to cut right through it. Okay, this is a little bit too long to read out loud, so go ahead and read it to yourself, pause the video if you need to, and then we'll dive in. Okay, first thing we always do is we pick out the conclusion. Now this is told from the historian's point of view, so we want the historian's conclusion, which is this sentence. Now if we were to put that into our own words, it would be something like, be careful, these notes don't necessarily prove that this guy copied Newton's calculus concept. All right, next, we look at each boldface statement and we see if it's a conclusion-y type statement or an evidence-y type statement, and we also see which logical direction it goes in. So the first boldface statement, well, that's an evidence-y kind of statement, and it supports the second boldface statement, and the second boldface statement goes against the historian's conclusion in the traditional view. Now, the second boldface statement, that's a conclusion-y type of statement that contradicts the historian's conclusion and the traditional point of view. All right. We're ready to dive into the answer choices. First thing we check, they must label the first statement with an evidence-y kind of word, and they must label the second statement with a conclusion-y kind of word, which means A is out. A says the first statement is a claim. A claim is a conclusion-y kind of word, not an evidence-y kind of word. We don't have to read any further. Eliminate answer choice A. Now, B says the first statement is evidence. Yep, and it says the second statement is a conclusion. Yep, B stays. C says the first statement is evidence, yep, and the second is a position. Yeah, a position is a conclusion-y kind of word. C stays. D is out. D says that both statements are evidence, but we know that's not true. The second statement is a conclusion, so that means that D is out. E gets it right. E says the first statement supports a position, yep, that's an evidence-y kind of thing, and the second is a conclusion. Exactly right. So we've knocked out two answer choices. Next step, check logical direction. Let's start with E. Well, the first part is right. The evidence supports the second statement, which contradicts the historian. And we run into trouble in the second part of this answer choice. The second statement is a conclusion that contradicts the historian. The historian doesn't draw from that position. That position doesn't support him. That means that E is out. C is also out. The first sentence supports the second sentence. And the second sentence presents a conclusion or a position that contradicts the historian. The historian does not defend the conclusion in the second sentence. The second sentence contradicts him. So that means that C is out. B gets it right. The first sentence supports the second sentence, and the historian disagrees or has reservations 
about the second sentence. That means B is right. Now, this is actually a pretty tricky question, but if you break it down into steps and take one step at a time, it's a lot easier. First, do they label the sentences correctly as conclusions or evidence? Next, do they get the logical direction right? Nice job. So on any boldface question, they gotta get these three things right. They have to correctly label each sentence as either evidence or a conclusion, and they've gotta get the logical direction right. At that point, you're usually down to the correct answer. Sometimes they can be mean and they can have you nitpick the specific label that they've attached to each sentence. The trick is to go through every answer choice first, checking to see if they get the evidence and conclusion labels right, then go through the remaining answer choices and check for logical direction. And again, if they're mean, you may have to go through the remaining answer choices one more time to see what you think about the specific label that they assigned to each sentence. Now, if you do this, you're, what you're gonna find is you're gonna go very, very quickly and very, very confidently through these questions. Okay, great job. And remember, you can get the GRE Bootcamp completely free. The link right down there in the description. Great work. We'll see you next time.